we're going to start off in tiptoe. And in the beginning, it's kind of hard because you want to make sure that you don't start going until the right path has been found. So just wait for all the other players to find the right path. So you can see that all these people, the hot dog people, the soda people, they have found the right path. So now you're just going to want to push to stay in the middle of them. Uh, make sure that you're always moving, you're always pushing to be in the middle. Because you don't want to be behind, because you want to act. You want to make sure that you make it at the end. And that you don't want to get left behind. But you also don't want to be at the very front, because that's how you get pushed off and you die. So just fight to be in the middle. And that, I find, is really helpful. And do not stay at the very front, because that's how you get pushed. And you can either maybe find the right path, but it's also very easy to get pushed off that way and as you can see some of the tiles are shaking if they shake that means that they're not the actual right path and if you step onto them you'll fall over so yeah you just wait in the middle of everybody to make sure you that you don't get pushed over you can see that it's just me and the hot dog person so i don't want to get going so i'm going to wait for him and once it gets down to the last two pi uh, tiles it's always forward and I got very lucky there with that. But yeah, that's it. Thanks. So here we have Gate Crash. This is definitely one of the harder mini games. It takes a lot of getting to know and getting used to the map. So we're going to start off here by... Yeah, and you really just want to get the timing down. Uh, that's one of the biggest parts of it, learning when the timing. So we'll start off. And uh, you can see this one just went down. So we can go over that. And that one just turned down. So it's getting that timing right and being uh, at the uh, door when it's just going down. And this one on the side of this one, it only goes down like very rarely. So don't go there. And then just be patient on this last one. And for the end slime bit, go down the middle. And sometimes you can make it through the middle. But if you go in the middle, you can know to go down the sides too. So that's helpful. So here, in the beginning of Fall Ball, the beginning is very important. Because this is when you're, uh, like, at the beginning, this is when you want to really push to get goals. And once you get your first goal, the game can, it, like, if you get the first goal before the other team, that can really make or break your round. So just wait for it to hit the ground, and then dive when you're hitting it. So... Uh, instead of just jumping at it or hitting underneath it, dive at it and that'll give it a bit of extra distance and it'll make it more accurate. So, yeah, you can see that we did get the first goal. So, I'm gonna, as soon as you get a goal, you want to go back to your net and start playing D. Because uh, that way you'll just be able to hopefully hold your lead while your other teammates. Um, get more goals maybe so you always once you get a lead you want to go and immediately play defense and you can see that we were tied there so i went and got a goal and yeah just as soon as you get a lead go and play defense and in the beginning just really push to get the first goal so we have fruit shoot here and this is actually one of the easier mini games once you start to understand the patterns and so what you want to do is hold one side you can either go left or right but you want to stay on one side that way you have these little purple bouncy blocks to protect you from the flying fruit and you can just go around it or uh yeah and you have them pr to protect you and you can either go around them or as you can see as i come up here i just jump over it and it makes it perfect you have the little purple blocks to defend you and if you do get hit, uh, you'll bounce back into the block, so you won't go very far at all. Once I figured out this trick, this uh, became like the easiest mini game for me. So with seesaw, this is one of the mini games that you just have to play a lot to really start to understand it. But one of the biggest things you can do uh, to begin to understand it is have patience, because especially in the beginning getting far in the beginning is really important but throughout the entire uh mini game patience and waiting for it to come up is really really important and the second thing is when you're jumping dive dive for the seesaw because that gives you a bit of 
a more grip to the seesaw so that you can just stand up and start running to the other one. And, um, yeah, other than that, get ahead in the beginning, because if you get ahead in the beginning, you can even just fail a couple times and still be ahead. So if you can get ahead in the beginning, that is really important. So, yeah, get ahead, be patient, and dive to grab onto the seesaw. Okay, so, slime climb. You're going to want to start off by not falling there and jumping on the second one. I see some people trying to jump on the first little yellow block. Jump on the second one because that way you have a higher chance of actually getting up. And yeah, be patient as you're going through the pushing blocks and just avoid the falling balls. Really, it's not very hard. Main one side. And then come into the list, this little crevasse here and jump up right at the perfect moment. You can see I actually failed it here. So you need to be patient. Uh, go back into it and jump it just the right time so that you can get up here the other one pushes and then you'll make it and that's a good little shortcut that if you get good at it's really nice so main the one side here as you're going through the pushing poles try not to get hit because it's very easy to fall here and these yellow rods these are one of the hardest parts of the entire level very easy to fall but if you made it f quite far ahead you can try it a couple times just jump into the very middle of it if you jump on the side you're almost guaranteed to fall and coming into the hammers stay in the middle of the hammers so that you can just make it th uh, through very smoothly like that and on this one be patient with it you can uh, go through really fast like I just did but if you're not as experienced it's really helpful to just be patient with it as you're going through and with these wrecking balls, if you get hit here, you're probably guaranteed to fall. So be very careful and patient as you're going through, and then you've qualified. Rollout. This is one of the easier mini games I find, but there is a couple things you can do to almost guarantee that you qualify. So with these little block things, you can jump onto them to stop yourself from falling and waste a bit of time for other people to die. And stay away from people as much as you can because that's one of the most important things because if you can stay away from people th there's no chance of you getting grabbed by them and then not being able to make a jump or anything and other than that be very careful with your timing because i've had a ton of times where i just missed the timing from just a split second and then i just fell into the ditch so yeah be very careful of your timing and stay away from people jinxed so in my uh, play of this one i was not the person jinxed so what i did was i uh what i like to do is jump onto the spinny thing and just roll around for a bit waste a bit of time and try not to get hit and uh, that way you can just wait while all the other people on the ground level get hit themselves but eventually the other team or the people with the jinx will come up and you'll have to move so but yeah this is going on the spinny thing is a very good way to get there but once you do have to go off uh just stay away from anybody on the other team and if you uh, encounter anybody like i just did just dive over them that's a very good way to dodge it by diving and jumping and stuff i you see it's sometimes it's unavoidable but i did get jinxed so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up to people and I'm going to just corner them or come up to them as they're running at me. And that's a very, very easy way to get people yourself and just corner people and run into them if you start with the jinx. Hoopsie Daisy. So I like to start off by going onto the little platform that has the uh, big moving way up. Uh, that way, because uh, I find the hoops spawn uh, there more often in the beginning. But after I've done that, I like to <coughs> go into the middle for a little bit and then come up to the slide back here. And then this is where I stay for the entire for the entire rest of the round. Because I can just stay here and stay hyper alert and hyper focused so that when any... And you can dive through the little gap in the middle of the two. Uh, and so whenever any hoops come up on the sides or in the middle, I can just get them, just like this, because this is one of the hot spots for them to spawn, just up on these little slides, and it's a very quick way to really help out your team by getting quite a lot. 
So, yeah, uh, you can stay in the middle, uh, but just try to stay in one spot. Uh, either stay in the, stay in the middle, stay on the sl uh, slide up back here, or stay in the slide up in the middle. But uh, stay somewhere. Royal Fumble. This is a, a very interesting final round. So don't worry if you start off without the tail. Uh, in the beginning, for the first like minute, it does not matter much whether you have a tail or not. It's the last couple, maybe let's say 20 seconds, that really matters when you have a tail. But if you do get one in the beginning, uh, just run around as much as you can and do and try to stay out of the corners because that way there's only two escape routes and you can get very easily um, cornered in. So just stay out of the corners and constantly keep moving around. But if you don't choose to go for a tail in the beginning, just uh, follow the guy around the entire time so you know where he is. That way at the very end, in the last couple seconds when it really matters or what you're doing and if you have a tail or not, you can uh, get the guy and you can come up close to him. Um, but yeah, just continue to move and at the last couple seconds here i am going to try to keep my eye on the horse as much as possible and keep moving around him and try to corner him off as he's jumping or diving or getting stuck and i did manage to grab the tail again but this is a great example of how unfair and annoying this mini game can be because i have it at the very end and i didn't win because i took it he took it at the last second be very careful Perfect match, one of the most hated mini games of them all. So what you're gonna want to start doing in the beginning is go to the very back and pay attention to what. Uh, and the, on the first round of perfect match, there's only gonna be two fruit you have to look out for. In my case, it was apple and orange. So stay in the very back and find which one, so that you can very easily go over to it. So for the second round, you're gonna stay in the back. You're uh, gonna continue to stay in the back and look at and remember all of the fruits. The best way I find to remember where they are is say it out loud while looking at the tile. So like banana, cherry, apple, orange in the pattern where they are on the map. That way I can go over to it immediately. And my favorite strategy for the last round of perfect match is to just either go in the back again and look at them but sometimes that can be a bit tricky because all the fruits i think are in it so i like to just uh follow the crowds like wherever there's a big clump of people that's probably going to be the correct fruit so you can just follow them and it's a very easy way to get it like you can see over there there's a big crowd of people because that's the correct one so yeah easy Rock and roll, this is one of the more complicated ones. At the beginning, just push it in the middle of the ball. But as you progress in the minigame, push on the opposite side of where the rest of your team is going. So if the your entire team is pushing on the right side of the ball, then push on the left side of it. That way you can center it out to go exactly where you want to go. And that makes it very easy to maneuver through these poles, which is one of the harder ones to do. And... Yeah, and once you get to the end, at the end, some people go over to stop the other uh, team's balls, but what I like to do is just stay with my own one. Don't bother with whatever uh, what everybody else is doing. Just stay focused on my own one and go with it far, and, you, and you'll get it. Jump Showdown. So, for this one... You're going to want to continue to move, like keep moving, because you don't want to get stuck when the uh, two clubs are really close together, because that way it, it's almost impossible to get through it, and that's a very easy way to get knocked over and get pushed out off the map. And the platforms below you, below your feet, are going to continue to fall down, so you want to just keep moving so that if you are on the platform that is falling, that you don't fall down with it because that's happened to me quite a lot so i just like to keep moving so that i'm not on the platform that gets knocked down but now 
when it gets to the last couple platforms you can be in the middle with, with the platforms that are gonna stay and you just want to focus on jumping at the right time if they're really close together move a bit forward to give you a bit of time for you to jump but then just really be hyper laser focused on jumping at the correct times and uh, to not get stuck between the two and also try to stay out of the big crowds because sometimes people can grab you and you'll fall over and you'll get just knocked off by the pole as it sweeps so yeah uh, do your best this is one of the harder ones so starting off in hoarders just go around the ball at the beginning because there's no need to just ram at it and um, knock it into the other team's uh, area that's not going to help you at all so just go around it at the beginning and then uh, dive jump at the ball to so give it a bit of extra distance and once you have all of the balls or uh, once you have at least two balls into your area start playing defense because you really uh once you start playing defense and you have a couple in there uh that's a really easy way to just hold them hold all the other people off hold them in your area and get the qualification so jump club this one isn't that hard, but and the same rules apply with the jump showdown to uh, stay moving constantly and stay out of the crowds. Because uh, if you get knocked over by the crowds or if you get uh, caught between the two uh, ones, it's between the two, uh, what do you call those? I guess poles or swinging things, sweepers. Uh, if you got get caught between the two of them, it's almost impossible to pass through it. So keep uh, moving and be uh, very focused on when you can go back and jump over it. But this one isn't very hard because you usually do it when there's quite a lot of people. So they die quickly and you can just be focused on it and get over with it quickly. So hexagon. The biggest tip I can give you for this one is to stay moving on the outside. On the first couple layers just focus on staying alive and not falling too far but once you get down to a point or, or, uh, where a lot of people have been eliminated or you go so far down in the layers that there's not very many people just stay on the outside to waste as many hexagon uh, blocks as possible and uh, get as far as possible go on the outside and once you get down if you get down to the last couple people Start jumping. Start just jumping on the blocks instead of walking. That way you can savor as many of them as possible. And that'll make it a lot uh, easier to stay alive longer when there's just a couple people left. This is one of the harder ones. There's not many tips I can give you other than staying on the outside. Good luck. So... Starting off with DoorDash, stay in the middle or the back of the big crowd, because that way you'll be able to see uh, all the people who have already gone, so you'll be able to see exactly which doors to go to, and not waste any time getting caught behind from uh, just getting the wrong door. And if you're caught up into a crowd, like if you're trying to pass through a door and there's a massive crowd, just dive on top of it and they'll and the crowd will carry you through. You might get knocked over by the end of it, but it is a very, very good way to just get through when there's a big crowd. Because you don't want to get knocked over to the side and not make it. Good luck. So for this one. You can grab a tail from your teammates, but for obvious reasons, don't do that. You want to have your, uh, you want to have the most tails out of everybody. And so, if you don't have a tail, I recommend coming into the middle and grabbing a tail from someone falling, like I just did there. But if you get cornered by someone and you get your tail taken, just come around and um, come back down into the middle and grab another one. Uh, the tail grabbing mechanics are very annoying. I'm surprised I didn't mention this in the other mini games, but you might have to just like double grab them or put in a bit of effort to actually get it, and it can be a bit annoying if you feel like you've been uh, you've gotten your tail taken from too far. 
but just come into the middle and run around a lot and make sure to grab a tail if you don't have a tail at the end that doesn't mean that you've a hundred percent lost but it'll definitely help your team a lot and give you a lot higher chances of winning so yeah just and if you have a tail i don't recommend coming into the middle um just keep moving as much as you can in the outside but try to not go in the corners as much uh dive to uh, go over someone if you want to avoid getting your tail taken you can dive over them and maybe even knock them over and that's good so here you want to just at the beginning it's not the worst thing if you fall over but you do definitely want to try to stay on the actual clubs uh so you can see i did make it here and for this one up here this one's quite hard making it through these moving gates but don't fight against it just go as they move around and stay in the crowd and on the and right there did you see how i just dove on top of the crowd and i was carried over that's a very easy way to get through on these wrecking balls try not Try your best to not get hit. And then on this end part, just stay on one side. And you've made it. This is one of the quicker mini games. So, on Dizzy Heights. This is one of the longer ones, but there's a lot of opportunities to get ahead. You want to start off by uh, going on the left side here. Uh, I did make a bit of a mistake by not getting the timing right. But the left side is the fastest route to get to the end and go up here at the uh at this bit you want to jump uh like continue to jump down and this is amazing you can just dive through the balls and that makes it a lot easier than uh and a lot less time consuming than hiding behind the blocks or getting hit for this one the quickest side to go on is the right and uh, I have made some mistakes by not getting the timing right or getting knocked over, but and don't fight the uh, moving tables. That's n uh, really not going to help you at all. Here, go in the middle. Uh, that give you the lowest chance of getting hit by one of the balls, and then main the side here, and you've qualified. So starting off, if you're at the big, uh, if you're at the front of the line, jump down the little hill to get a bit ahead of the crowd, and then just be patient and time your jumps over these beginning sweepers, uh, patiently and correctly. Coming up here, I prefer to go on the yellow blocks rather than jumping and grabbing myself up, but it doesn't really matter which one you do. Um. Coming up here, this is very simple. Just wait for the timing and go at the bottom when there's an opening. Just like that. And then this uh, little whirly jig thing here just is very easy. Uh, lots of openings going through it. And try to go on the side instead of the middle. It, it's always saved me a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it's just usually the better option. There is the off chance where you'll actually make it through the center. But, I, but it's you almost always better to go on the side. So I was quite stupid, and I didn't wait for the sweeper and the big uh, one at the end to open for me. But what you want to do is just wait for, uh, just continuously jump over the sweeper at the very end and wait for there to be an opening on the big one. And then you'll, and then it's just as simple as, uh, a jump, a dive, and then qualifying. One of the easier rounds. So, for an egg scramble, what you want to do is get as many eggs into your net as possible in the beginning. This is really going to be very helpful because playing catch up after the main big beginning rush is really difficult. So once you get all the eggs you can get into the net, you want to, if you're ahead of the other teams, you want to go ahead and play defense. But if you're not, then you do have to go and play catch up and try to steal from other teams. But if you are ahead, absolutely go and immediately play defense. Because uh, the more defense and the more far you had are, 
or the more far ahead you are, the higher chance you have of making it. So just go as soon as you get a lead over the t other teams. Just uh, go play defense. That's very important and easy. So block party. Uh, what I like to try to do is stay in the middle. That way you can know which uh, side or where you need to go. In the beginning, it's not as important to stay in the middle, but after that, it can really save your life. Other than that, try to stay out of the big crowd, because one way that you can absolutely easily die is by getting caught up in the crowd, falling over, and then not being able to get over to the other side or avoiding the blocks in time so once you understand it and you follow these tips it's quite easy so just like with the other tail tag um, mini games if you don't have a tail in the beginning and it's not too terrible and it's not too hard to get one at the end uh, so to get a tail if you need one just try to uh, spot someone with a tail and then corner them if they're the only uh, person around there's no other people chasing them then that can't then that can actually be quite good so you can just continually chase them and eventually you'll be able to cut them off and grab their tail if there's someone trying to grab your tail just dive over them to dodge them and once I have a tail I like to go and just walk around in the middle that way it's harder for people to see you and target you. And then you can just uh, ride on the way to the end and qualify quite easily. Fall Mountain, one of the hardest mini games in fall, guys. In the beginning, go on the side here and then move into the middle. Uh, be careful while going through the spinny gates and be very careful to dodge the balls. As you're coming back up, uh, go on the uh, hard side to go through the hammers. That way you won't even get touched by them. Then you can just quickly jump up here, get a little nudge from this, and then wait for the crown to come down, and then grab it just like you would grab any other like tail or anything that's very uh very hard but if you get lucky that's how i won maybe it can be how you won